Uh, so I am going to speak in English, um, and you'll be required to do an interview in English uh, when you do get to that stage of the process. Um, and I actually learned a lot from listening to you guys, so, so excellent presentations there. Um, but before I talk a little bit about sort of our piece of the process, which is really the interview um, that determines whether you're eligible for a visa, I'll just take a quick step back and just let you know who I am and, and what I do. Um, so I'm actually the consular chief at the U.S. Embassy here in Zagreb. Um, I run the consular section. The consular section has two primary purposes. Number one is we focus on assisting U.S. citizens who are either <laughs> living here in Croatia or are traveling through Croatia. So maybe they lose a passport, maybe they get hospitalized, things like that. The staff in our section will help those U.S. citizens. So that's one half of what we do. The other half of what we do is we issue visas um, to Croatian citizens for a variety of different reasons. Um, those reasons could be going to study in the U.S. The most common reason is probably going as a tourist to the U.S. That's probably 75% of the visas that we issue um, are going to be for people who are just going as a tourist um, for a temporary stay. We also issue visas for um, other purposes, uh, business purposes, people that want to work in the U.S. There's a wide variety of visa categories arranged, uh, uh, available. And um, so, but in my opinion, my favorite visa to actually uh, interview and to ultimately issue is the summer work travel. Uh, J-1 visa. It's really exciting for me. I get very excited to hear about where students are going, um, what their hopes are for the program, and what they want to do. And one of the biggest priorities for the U.S. government is to facilitate cultural exchange, to facilitate ed educational opportunities in the U.S. Um, so certainly, we're big advocates of the program. And I will say this right up front. The I'd say the, the vast majority of people who do apply do get approved for their visas, as long as you meet the, the criteria. Um, so hopefully this discussion today will help demystify the process a little bit and perhaps make you a little less scared before you're going into the interview. Um, it's perfectly natural to be intimidated by the process. You're going out to... Uh, boozing out to the cornfields, and you're going to this big, imposing building. It's kind of scary looking, and you have to go through security and all that. So I'll talk a little bit about that process. But we really want to make you a little less intimidated by this whole process. So we don't care which program sponsor you choose uh, to apply with. I'm sure they all have excellent merits, but one thing that you don't have a choice in is you must interview with us at the U.S. Em Embassy. So whatever I can do to help make you a little more comfortable with that, uh, hopefully this discussion can do that. <laughs> and certainly, feel free to ask me questions throughout this. Um, I will have to depart very shortly afterwards, so I'm happy to take questions during the, the discussion as well. Um, and, and we can keep this more as a dialogue. Um, gentlemen here, you, you covered most of the process leading up to the, the visa, so I won't talk too much about that. But uh, first of all, just want to get an understanding of who here, uh, I love the question, who's been on the program, and I saw a couple hands back here of who's been on the summer work travel program. Can, can you say where you actually went? Where did you go? Uh, I went to New Jersey. New Jersey, okay. To the shore there? <clears throat> Okay, excellent, excellent. Uh, and I, I think I saw another hand back there. Oh, wow. That's, that's some beautiful country there, definitely. Um, so, full disclaimer, I also heard something about the program Avalon, New Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, when I was in university, spent a couple summers working in Avalon, New Jersey. Um, so, so, that was just funny to hear that because I, I have experience there. I spent like two summers. 
lived in a big house with a bunch of different people, and we had a ton of, a ton of fun there. Um, I actually went to Atlantic City and drove up there and worked at one of the casinos, so a little bit different situation, but, uh, but uh, I certainly enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. It's a beautiful beach area and uh, really enjoyed New Jersey, so just put it in my little plug for that. Um, but certainly there's many gorgeous, amazing places to visit in the U.S., and, and I love hearing people who might be returning to the, the Summer Work Travel Program, hearing about your experiences too, so that's great to hear. Who else has even been to the U.S.? So who's maybe traveled as a tourist or something like that? Anyone else? You have, okay. Yeah, I, I have family in the U.S., so we've okay. been a couple of times there. And Great. Family reunion and stuff like that. Excellent. Nobody else has been to the U.S.? Oh, okay, right here. Okay, we were in Alaska, Anchorage. Oh, wow. Last summer. Just for tourism? Just work visiting? Work and travel, yeah. Work and travel, okay, excellent, excellent, yeah. Uh, Alaska, that's, from what I hear, beautiful. I haven't been that far, but um, I've heard it's amazing, yeah. yeah. It's the most amazing place I've seen. Wow, okay. <laughs> so that's so cool to hear, that's yes. great. Um, yeah, so, so, not, so not much else, not many other people have actually traveled to the U.S. Okay, that's good to know. You just, just want to know uh, what, I'm, what I'm dealing with here. So, um, yes, so you got a lot of information about the process, uh, picking a program sponsor, what they provide, um, helping you arrange the job, uh, helping you arrange housing, all of that, now, all of that stuff happens before you get to us, right? So once you get to us, what's essentially going to happen is um, you're required to come to the embassy, you're required to make an appointment to come, and then you're required to come and be a person for an interview with uh, a consular officer at the U.S. Embassy. Um, so that's typically going to be an American, um, and we all have some language training, but obviously we're kind of testing you to see how your English language is, um, and that's part of the process. If we get stuck during the interview, uh, we can always bring someone in to help translate if we don't understand you or you're not understanding us, um, but we prefer not to, so we'll try our best to get through our interview just a one-on-one, -on -one, okay? Um, I'm sure Garanka and other folks have better things to do than to be running up to the window every time and, and talking to folks. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's a fantastic program. I was really excited when I had the opportunity to do the interviews, um, but I just want to talk a little bit about the process too. So, once you have your DS 2019, once you've already determined what your job's going to be, after that process is all complete, you know where you're going, you know where your housing is, you probably purchased your ticket, everything else. Um, then you're gonna be required to pay for the visa online. So you go online, you're gonna make an appointment. Um, it's pretty easy to do, it's pretty simple. We typically try to make sure that we have appointment slots available specifically for this visa category so that you don't have to wait a long time to get your appointment, okay? We try as, as uh, much as possible to have next day or maybe within a couple days visa uh, appointments available. Doesn't always work out that way, but we're gonna do our best, and especially in that season, kinda, I'd say about May we're starting. May, really, yeah. 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 Middle, 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 middle. yeah, middle April to uh, May. We really try to set aside appointments because we know you have jobs to go to. We know you need to be there on time and get started and, and start making that money and enjoying your time there. So um, we, we try to make sure that we have those appointments available for you. All right, so you're gonna make an appointment. You're gonna do that through the scheduler online. Um, and then after that, you will know your date that you need to come in. Um, and then for the visa appointment, you know, you really want to come prepared. Um, be prepared to discuss why you're doing the program, what your uh, what you're studying in school, what your plan is after the program, what your plan is after you graduate from school. Um, so we're trying to get a, a sense of 
you know, what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve, what you're doing, okay? Um, so there's no magic to the process, but, but just come prepared to be able to articulate why you're doing this, what you're doing, and what you're going to do <coughs> afterwards, all right? So that's very important. Um, you know, make sure you have all your paperwork. Uh, copy of, you know, copies of all the paperwork is, is essential as well. You want to come well prepared, and I'm sure the the uh, you know the program sponsors that you work with will will help you with that paperwork part of it. Um, if you don't have something that could delay the process a little bit, we may ask you, okay, I'd like to see this additional um, you know like if you don't bring your student in index, although I know a lot of folks are not using indexes anymore, uh, but you'll want to go online and print out like your current schedule. Uh, we want to see that you're actively enrolled um, and that you're in school, you're doing what, you're say, what you say you're doing, and that's something that we're going to look at during the interview. So you want to bring a printout of that at least, if not your index, um, so that we can have a look at it. We'll, we'll probably ask you a little bit about it. What are you studying? Uh, what's your plan afterwards? How are you doing in your courses? Um, and, you know, we're, we're looking to see, are you a serious student? Are you... Do you have a goal for afterwards? Um, so that is important as well. You want to make sure you can come in and talk about your education, talk about your goals, those sorts of things. Um, and that, that's very important to us. So once you, once you have all of your documentation, you've got your appointment, um, you've done your fee payment, everything's ready, that date is coming up, then I would say for your visa appointment time, you should probably come at least 15 minutes maybe beforehand. It's a pretty quick process, but you may have to wait in line outside the embassy for a little bit as people start to queue up. And you're gonna, get a, you're gonna have to go through security. Um, and so just be prepared for that. Don't bring laptops. Don't bring your iPads or whatever like that uh, because you cannot bring those electronics into the waiting room. So don't bring those. Um, you can bring your phone, but you can't bring it in. You'll have to leave it at the, the desk when you come into the, the security entrance of the facility. So you'll have to leave it there. They'll give you like a little yellow card and then you can retrieve it when you come back out. Because obviously people need to, to carry their phones with them. But you won't be able to bring that in. So again, if there's something on your phone that you think is going to be important to show us during the interview or that you think we might be asking about, um, make sure you print it out in a hard copy before the interview. Okay? So Because you can't come in and say, oh, hold on, let me show you what's on my phone. No, that's not going to work. You can't bring your phones in. All right? So no electronics are brought in. Um, you're going to go through the security process, you'll go through a metal detector, um, it, it, and, and essentially at that point, that takes you know, probably about 10-15 minutes to go through that. You'll come into the waiting room, um, you'll get a number, you'll basically take a seat after that and just wait for your number to be called, and we'll call you up. Okay. Um, well, actually, they'll go to the intake and talk to you guys first. Do some fingerprinting, um, and then you'll have a seat and wait for your number to be called again. Once your number is called, that's the interview part, and you're going to talk to an officer at that point. So that's going to be an American officer, um, and they're going to start asking you questions about you know, the things that I mentioned earlier, your goals for the program, what, what your educational background is, um, what your plans are after you study, what your plans are after the program. Um, so it's not as intimidating as it sounds. Uh, we, we pride ourselves on good customer service and trying to be as friendly as possible and hopefully set you at ease during this. Um, we're not there to, to scare you and uh, you know we really are excited as well to have you come to the U.S. and uh, be able to see all the amazing sites, make new friends, get to know American culture, um, improve your English language ability, maybe develop a New Jersey or a, a Massachusetts accent while you're there. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, Nantucket is extremely popular. Yeah, right? very sure. much so, isn't and it? Martha's Vineyard. Oh, yeah. Um, those two places, a lot of Croatians uh, travel to those locations, have amazing experiences. I see many that um, have gone back like you know, two, three times during the summer to the same place. They yeah. just love it and have an amazing experience there. So um, once you have your interview, you will typically know at the conclusion of that interview, it's probably going to be no more than five minutes. Um, but at the conclusion of that interview, you should know whether you're going to get a visa or not. Um, hopefully it's going to be a yes. The, again, the vast majority of times it's a yes. Um, and once you have been told that you're issued a visa or a visa has been approved for you, um, it typically takes about anywhere from two to four or five days, somewhere in that range. But it's a pretty quick process to actually get your passport back. You're going to leave the passport with us. We're going to actually print a visa, put it in the passport, and then you, we will mail that passport back to you by DHL, all right? So you're not gonna come back to the embassy to pick it up. You're gonna wait for us to send it to you and we'll send it to you by DHL. And uh, depending on where you're from and where you select when you make your appointment and do your application online, depending on where you select, we'll send it to the nearest DHL office in that location. There's one here in Zagreb, uh, but there's how many? Uh, Six or seven, nine. nine, okay. Nine locations around the country. So if you're going to be, you know, in um, Rijeka or someplace else, we do have one in Rijeka, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you're going to be in Rijeka, you can always select that and we'll mail it to you. It might just take an extra day or so. But it's very quick. I mean, typically no more than like four days, three, four days. Yeah. Uh, so you'll get it back quickly. However, we certainly do encourage you to plan well in advance. Don't come in the day before you're supposed to show up for your job and uh, <laughs> expect to have an immediate turnaround of the visa. We're not, we're not going to do that because we have some things we have to do on our side. Um, so it's going to take a few days. All right. Um, once you have that, you're ready to go. You're off flying to the U.S. You've got your passport. You've got your visa. Um, carry your DS-2019, I think you have to have that in hand, to show at the border when you arrive in the U.S. You'll want to have that paperwork in hand. Um, and then from that point on, it's a different federal agency. It's not the State Department. You're going to be dealing with the Department of Homeland Security. And just to make one clarification, people oftentimes think, and, and I'm not saying this to scare you, but... Um, people often think, oh, the visa means I can go inside the U.S., I can travel inside the U.S. No, it just means you can present yourself at a port of entry in the U.S., and then the Department of Homeland Security makes a final determination there, like, okay, you've got a visa, we'll let you in, here's, here's for how long, okay? So just want to make that clarification, but not to scare you, typically you have a visa, Unless you have some other problems that popped up that we didn't know about, um, it sh there should be no problem in this. Um, and then you're off and running to your job, and, uh, and then hopefully you have an amazing experience, and you certainly want to take the time to do some traveling afterwards, um, and not just work, 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 work the whole time. You, know, you, you want to make money. Uh, there are some great opportunities to make good money, but you know the real purpose of this is work, have an amazing experience, make some money, and then also take some time to travel and you know see see some parts of the U.S. Uh, that maybe you never thought you'd have the opportunity to see. So with that, I'm happy to take some questions. And I may just mention yeah, one more thing. Please go right ahead. As soon as you receive DS 2019 form, that will be issued by the agency for you that you can go and attend an interview. You can schedule an interview doesn't matter if it's a month or two months before your program starts. But you cannot enter the United States but 30 days before the initial program starts, the initial date on your form. Yeah. So you can apply whenever you get to be a student. 
to a one night. <coughs> and if you need to, to travel earlier, then you can apply for B2 B tourist visa. You yeah. can B2, but then you have that problem that you have either to change the status or leave US and enter again on J1 visa. Yeah. No, great, great point. All right. Yeah, so earlier planning is better. Um, That'll ensure you get an appointment time that, that works for you and that's convenient for you as well. And we typically interview Mondays through Thursdays um, in the mornings, so um, just keep that in mind as well. Although during that busy season sometimes, when we start interviewing on Fridays and sometimes in the afternoons because we get a lot of people applying, so we wanna make sure you know we get you all taken care of before your uh, start date for work. But you'll be able to see those appointments if you, as soon as you put summer work travel program on the registration, it will automatically box <coughs> you with the, with the appointments for that category. You will not be able to schedule appointments for any other category but for that one. Excellent. Any other questions? <coughs> yes, sir. Is there any possibility that in the recent future, Croatia will become visa-free uh, for yeah, uh, so, so for this program,